We're going to be talking this morning a little bit about a, um, our family, the best family meal ever. And as we step into that, I'm going to ask Mash and Steph to be able just to, just to come and talk to our children a little bit about exactly what the best family meal ever is about. Because this is a time where we know, hey, it's family meals. I'm sure you've had one or two. You may even have gone through a drive through somewhere and said, could I have a family meal? Well, today, with our family together, we're going to be talking about the best family meal ever. Mash and Steph, are you ready? Come through, guys. They're from our kids' church. Let's make them feel especially welcome this morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Um, can we please get Luke 24 up on, on the screens? Oh, yes. That's for the parents while we talk the to the kids. So, good morning, boys and girls. Happy 2023. Happy New Year, friends. Yeah, it's a good year. Happy New Year, Teacher Steph. Happy New Year, Teacher Mash. Yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. You ready for the New Year? Um, yeah. I think so, a little bit. doesn't sound like you're, you're ready, Teacher Mesh. What's going on? <sighs> well, 2022 was a tough year for me. Yeah. It was a bit hard. Yeah, I think a lot of us had a tough year. Yeah. yeah. I actually lost a lot of friends. You did, Teacher Yeah, Mesh? I lost oh, some man. friends. It's not nice when you lose friends, eh, guys? Yeah. Mm. What and else? also, my mom wasn't feeling well. Your mom was sick. Yeah, my <sighs> mom wasn't feeling well. And I started something new. It yeah. kind of reminds me of like grade five Afrikaans. Ekperstani Nuxni. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a pretty hard job. I'm sorry, Teacher Mash. It sounds like, you know, you've been carrying around a heavy heart for a bit and, and like this tea bag. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's full of fear. Yeah. Uh, it's full of sickness. Yeah. And worry. Yeah. And anxiety. That's exactly how I feel. But you know what? Yeah. You know what, guys? You don't have to carry this heavy heart into the new year, Teacher Mesh. Yeah. Do you know why? Mm. I'm going to tell you why. I wonder why. Well, when Jesus died on the cross for us, yeah. right, what happened to his body, Teacher Mesh? I think his body was something. His body was broken. Oh. Yeah, his body was broken so that ours could be whole. I think that means we get to carry around that sickness with us. No, boys and girls, do you guys think we get to carry our brokenness? We get to carry our sickness around? Is that what it means? What does the body of Jesus mean? What, well, does anybody know, kids? What is the body of Jesus? What happened? What was the body of Jesus? Do? What did the body of Jesus do? His body was broken for us. Hey, Amen. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll throw you a sweetie. Oh, we don't have sweets, man. Ah, yeah. Teacher Mesh, she didn't bring the sweets. <laughs> okay, well, his body was broken, right? Yeah. So that ours could be healed and whole. That means we don't need to carry that sickness into yeah. the new year. We can only receive healing. Amen. So I'm going to get rid of that sickness. Why don't you hold my mic for oh, me, Teacher Mesh? Oh, crap. And his blood poured out for us, right? Yeah. To make us righteous children of God. That means we don't have to carry around sin. Yeah. We don't have to carry around worry. Yeah. Or stress. Or anxiety. Or yeah. loneliness. None of that. Yeah. Why don't you hold my mic for me again, teacher Mash? So, remind you of anything? This reminds me of something we did at Kids Church. I think it's um, communion. That's right, Teacher Mash. I'm talking about communion. Yeah. And when we take communion, something amazing happens. What's that? We get to see Jesus. We yeah. get to see Jesus' body broken for us and receive our healing. We get to see his blood poured out for us and receive our righteousness. Amen. And our hearts burn like a really good warm fire yeah do you know what happens when our hearts burn oh i'm gonna tell you what happens when our hearts burn if it will stand up straight for me okay when our hearts burn teacher mash when our hearts burn it makes <laughs> not set anything on fire Ooh. It's not working. 
There we go. No, we're going to do it again because we have a second one. Okay. Give me two seconds. Okay. So that's all us and poured out. Our worries and anxieties, they're all removed. That's why we come prepared. Okay. <laughs> so what happens when our hearts burn for Jesus? It makes Jesus bigger and bigger, and our problems smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And God turns all things for good. Amen. Amen. So like teacher Steph said, when Jesus is bigger, then God can work all things for good. And this reminds me of a scripture in Exodus 14. When the Israelites were surrounded by their enemies, they had problems behind them, and they had problems in front of them. But when Moses said, stand still and see Jesus, God made a way. He did. Yeah. He made a highway. He made a highway. In the ocean. In the ocean, in the sea. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, guys. Right now, we're going to call up Pastor Matt to talk about further what the body. Yeah. Amen. Good morning, church, and good morning to everybody that's online. It's such an amazing privilege to be here with you this morning. I'd just like to say thank you to Pastor Josh and Tara for this opportunity and for Pastor Alan uh, for his idea to have us all up here this morning in this amazing family service talking about the best family meal ever. And so I've been tasked with this morning to talk about the body of Jesus, and then Pastor Al's going to be talking to us about the blood of Jesus And so, why is the body of Jesus so important? I'm sure you've picked up this morning that we're talking a lot about communion, because there's something so special about partaking of this meal together as a family as we enter the new year. And so, the body of Jesus was broken for us, so that we could experience healing and wholeness, not only in our bodies, which we definitely believe in, but for every single area of our lives. And so, I've only got two scriptures for you this morning, I'm not going to make it very long, And also, just before I get to it, I wanted to say a shout out to all the youth that are here this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's good to have you guys here this morning. And so my first scripture this morning is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 in the New Living Translation, and it says, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, not you, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. Or in another translation, by his stripes, we are healed. And I'm sure quite a few of us are familiar with this scripture. But then we're going to jump back into the Old Testament. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 to 5. Because he opens it up so beautifully. Ironically, since he wrote it probably 400 years before Peter wrote his scripture. So let's read from verse 1. It says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in the dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his presence. So all those pictures online of Jesus with a six-pack and hulking muscles, it's false. Nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment for his sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. And he was whipped so that we could be healed. Church, isn't that such an amazing set of scriptures? Such an amazing prophecy. And I want to draw your attention to the tense. It's written in the past tense. Because the healing's already been dispensed. The work has already finished. The healing's already been paid for. 2023 has already been provided for. So we walk into the provision of God. We walk into the healing of God. We walk into the everything that He has for us. We don't have to beg and plead because it's there. And so I want to just give you an illustration this morning. Imagine... 
you're going to go on quite an illustrious holiday with your family. And you know you're the one paying because the kids aren't paying, right? So we're going on this really expensive holiday. We're going on a two-week bender. We've got so many activities planned. We have all the restaurants that everybody says they want to go to. And you just know that your wallet is about to cry, that it's about to hurt. And so you're on this holiday. Meanwhile, you can't really enjoy yourself because you're conscious the whole time of what it's going to cost. So it sometimes takes away from the enjoyment of the holiday because we're too busy thinking about the resource that we have to provide for. Now I want to use a different illustration. Imagine if you've got a billionaire friend and they say that they love you and you've known them since they, you, you went to school together, you went to primary school together, you were with them through the thick and thin, through varsity, you knew them before they became famous and they were like, you've been there for me. Um, you're not trying to take my money from me, so I just wanted to bless you with a holiday, all expenses paid trip to Europe for two weeks. I'm gonna give you a, um, a courtesy car, I'm gonna give you a petrol card, I'm gonna give you my credit card, and you can go all out, because I wanna bless you, because I love you. How much more differently do we experience that holiday and that vacation when we know that we're not the ones paying for it? So let's go into 2023 knowing that it's all been paid for. I don't need to fight for my healing. I get to walk in it. I get to receive it. That's my portion. And so let's quickly do one last breakdown of Isaiah chapter 53. And we're going to read from verse 3. It says, he was despised and rejected so that we could have acceptance. He was a man of sorrow so that we could have joy. He carried our weakness so that we could live in his strength. He was pierced for our rebellion so that we could live in obedience. He was crushed for our sins so that we can live with lightness. He was beaten so that we could live in shalom wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He was whipped so that we could be healed. So church, let's receive what Jesus has purchased for us. We don't need to be crushed because he was crushed in the garden for us. He was pressed as the olives are pressed so that we could walk in the anointing and the oil that comes from it. So let's walk in that finished work this year. As we go into 2023, let's remember that the body of Jesus was broken and crushed and torn apart so that ours wouldn't have to be. You don't have to carry this burden on your own. It's his burden. It's already been carried. It's already been paid for. You are good enough. You don't need to struggle what do you, where do you need healing and wholeness this year? Do you have rifts in your family? Because Jesus wants to bring restoration. Do you have hurting friendships? Jesus wants to renew them. Are you batting, battling with anxiety or a damaged heart? He wants to bring healing. Do you have symptoms in your body? Because he took stripes for that. And there's healing for you today. Do you need healing in your marriage? Because Jesus is saying yes. The answer's always been yes. It's always going to be yes. This year is your year. Not because of how hard you work, but because of how hard our Jesus worked for us. So let's receive that today, church. And so that's the end of my message this morning. I hope that you are blessed, and I hope that just like myself, you can walk into this year knowing that, man, we actually have it so good that no matter what's happening on the news this year, no matter what brokenness seems to be coming into the world or what it looks like it's trying to get into our home, that the body of Jesus has already conquered that space. So let's walk in it this year. And so I'm going to introduce, uh, we'll reintroduce Pastor Allen. He's going to come up and he's going to do um, an amazing little message for us on the, the blood of Jesus. So Pastor Al, can I welcome you back up onto stage? Well done, Pastor Matt. Hey, and he's left his notes up here for me there. Are we enjoying church this morning? Is it good to have our little people in the house, a proper family service? How are we doing, moms and dads? Not too stressful, I hope. Yeah, we're having fun. Church is a place where every generation is welcome. Whether you're a granny or whether you're an infant, it's a place for us all. And so we're happy to be able to celebrate the best family meal ever. I'm going to talk specifically to the boys and girls just now, but before I do that, I want to just talk to us as adults, just for a few minutes, and then we're going to jump back into an illustration 
that I have that I'm praying to the Lord that it all will work the way that we've planned it out. Pray with me. Parents, adults, um, often there is a sense around communion that it's something that we should be a little bit aware of, a little bit cautious of. Be careful because there's a part in the Bible that talks about that if you do this, if you have communion in an unworthy way, you eat judgment to yourself. And I've spoken to people over the years of church where they're saying, look, thanks, but no thanks. My mom never raised me to be a fool. If there's a chance that I'm going to drink judgment to myself, I'd rather leave that to one side uh, because I don't want to take the risk. And I want to just spend a, a few brief moments unpacking this because we believe that communion is the, one of the best gifts ever. We don't need to be afraid of it. We don't need to be cautious about it. We just need to be able to understand what it means and also understand the context in which the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians. Because in his warning, there's a specific reason why he said, guys, when it comes to communion, be careful. But, but we've taken that in a different context in our, in our space and many of us are a little bit cautious when it comes to that. I want to hopefully break that down so that we never have to be cautious about communion, but we can embrace it and receive all of the blessings that God has. So let's jump into 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. Paul writes, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Say remembrance. Say it louder. Remembrance. Here we go. Thank you, young man. I appreciate you saying it loud. Say it one. Was that, was that the lady behind you? Oh, anyway, let's say it all together again. Say remembrance loud. There we go. I can hear the children. Do it in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup of the supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. There's that word again, remembrance. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And then he goes on to say something specifically to that Corinthian church. This is what he says in verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So we're encouraged to do a number of things in these verses. We're encouraged to remember, and that's really what communion is about. It's remembering what Jesus has done for us. But secondly, he says, don't do this in an unworthy manner. What does that mean? Well, for us to really understand what we do in an unworthy manner, we have to look at the scripture in context. What was Paul writing to the Corinthians about before he said this? And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17, just a few verses earlier, he gives us the context. This is what he says, and I want to read it to you. Now, in giving you these instructions, I do not praise you. Since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear there's division among you, and in part, I believe it. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Okay, that's what we're talking about. The Lord's Supper is this, this family meal, this communion. So what is Paul going to say? He says, for in eating the Lord's Supper, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. They're rude. They don't wait for one another. And one is hungry and another one is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or you, do you despise the church of the Lord? 
and shame those who have nothing. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? No, I don't praise you. So church, that is the context in which Paul writes this admonition about eating in an unworthy manner. And for, for many years, we, can, we, we have, some of us confused that, I, I put myself included in that, where I thought I have to be worthy to, take, to partake of this meal. But it's not about me because I certainly <laughs> am not worthy all the time to have this meal. It, it's, not, it's not about me being worthy or unworthy. It's the way that I eat. It's the unworthy manner. And what was happening in Corinth is people were coming to church hungry. Some of them were coming for the wine because otherwise how, how else do you get drunk in church except have a bit too much wine from the communion? So basically what was happening is the church had these factions, these divisions. Some were like, well, we're here early. Let's eat all the bread. Some of them were drinking all the wine. And Paul has to address this. And he says, guys, what you're doing is you're eating in an unworthy manner. There's no unity. There's no togetherness. But most importantly, what you are forgetting is you are forgetting the, what Jesus did. This is in remembrance of me. So the Corinthian church were taking all of their time only in the physical elements of the meal. The bread, I'm hungry, I want to eat. And then when people who come in later, there's nothing left for them and they're left hungry. And then some of them were drinking all of the wine and getting drunk in church. And Paul is saying that was the unworthy manner in which you are eating. And so he says, look at yourself, look at your heart, examine yourself. What is your motive for taking the communion? It's not to be full of bread. It's not to have too much wine. Our motive in this is to remember Jesus. Say that together. Let's say, remember Jesus. Remember Jesus. There we go. It's great to have our children in the house. We are here to remember Jesus. And when we do that, as we come to this most holy moment, the, the best family meal ever, our heart is to remember Jesus. And when we do that, we, do, we partake in a worthy manner because we remember all that he did. And when we remember him on the cross, we remember our body, his body was broken. Why? So that we can be whole. That's why we don't get sick and that's why we don't have to die early. Because we remember Jesus. We remember him on the cross. We remember his sacrifice and we recognize that he took our sin. We also don't have to be completely worthy in and of ourselves. We're made worthy because of what Jesus did. So when we receive communion, when we look to Jesus, we recognize he was worthy. And because I put my faith in him, because I trusted him, I also become worthy. So it's not about me being worthy. It's about approaching the meal in a worthy manner, which is to keep Jesus front and center. Does that make sense? Are we all together with that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk a little bit about Matthew 26 when Jesus institutes this meal. And he says in Matthew 26 and verse 28, he took a cup, he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of my covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus' blood was shed so that our sins can be forgiven. And I'm gonna ask Pastor Matt to come and give me a hand here. And we've got a little illustration that we're gonna show all of our children. Children, are you watching? If you can't see up here, watch the screens. Because you see here, we have something. Can I have that cup, Matt? Michelle, thank you. Pastor Matt has got something in there that represents our sin. There's a, a passage of scripture in the Old Testament where it talks about Isaiah and our sins are as red as scarlet. But then he said that he will come and make them as white as snow. And so what we have here is this represents our sin. And we take the blood of Jesus here and we put the blood of Jesus into that. And we, oh wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? that the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. They were red, scarlet, and all of a sudden, what happens? They go as white as snow. And so I want us to remember, it's just a picture, 
And there's not magic in that. All we did was we used a little bit of science, a little bit of chemical reaction to make it work, but it works beautifully. But it's such a beautiful picture that when we recognize the blood of Jesus, it washes away. Even though our our sins were red like scarlet, we become white as snow. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of time together as a family. We're going to receive communion. But before we do that, I would like to make an invitation to everybody. Whether you're here in this building or whether you're watching us online, if you never realized that Jesus has forgiven your sin, you may have heard a lot of different things about Jesus. You may have heard maybe that that Jesus is angry with you or God is angry because of the wrong things you've done. Well, that's only part of the picture because God was angry with our sin. But he knew we could never save ourselves. He knew that we could never do anything that would sort out this problem. And so he sent his own son, Jesus, to be the punishment, to receive the punishment, to, to be the, the, the one who takes our guiltiness, who takes our sin. And he came and he died on the cross. And in dying on the cross for us, What he did was he took the punishment that should have been mine, that should have been yours, that should have been the whole world's, and he took it on himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, would not die, but would have everlasting life. So God hasn't only died for those of us that are here in church this morning, he's died for the whole world. All we need to do is be able to reach out and receive his gift of forgiveness. And the Bible says there's two ways we do that. We believe in our heart that God died for us, and then we speak that out. Speak out what we believe. And if you're here today and you've never heard that God loves you, you've never realized that Jesus died for your sin. He loved you so much that he died in your place. We would love you to have the opportunity this morning to receive that gift of salvation for yourself. You already have faith because you've heard the good news. You can feel like, yes, I believe that. Secondly, you need to speak it out. And we do that as we pray together. And so I'm gonna ask our church family this morning to be able to pray together with you that if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can pray this prayer together with us. Believe it in your heart. Speak it with your mouth. The Bible says you will be saved. And if you're watching online, wherever you're watching, you can pray this prayer right now and you can receive that awesome gift of salvation. So I'm going to ask us all, boys and girls, moms and dads, we're going to close our eyes. And if you've never prayed to receive Jesus and the forgiveness that he has for you, you can pray this and mean it in your heart and you will be saved. Say this with us, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you did it for me. And I receive the gift of forgiveness. Thank you that your, your blood washes away all my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Bible says that when you've prayed that prayer, that you are a new believer, that so many things have happened in your life. Whether you've done that online or whether you've done that in this room, you are a new believer in Jesus and so many things have shifted and changed for you. We'd love to be able to help you step into this new life. And so if you're in our Greenstone campus here today, uh, out through the doors at the back on my right, there's a new believers table. Stop by there. We'll give you something. We'll be able to talk with you a little bit about what this means and, and help you to step into all that Jesus has done for you. If you're online, just type in the comments, I gave my life to Jesus, and someone will be in touch with you to be able to help you, to be able to get the same resources that people are getting here in the room at Greenstone 
in an electronic format to you online. Just let us know. But we're so excited because we truly believe that this is the beginning of something awesome that God is doing in your heart and in your life. We're going to receive communion together. We're actually going to put into practice the best family meal ever. And so I'm going to ask moms and dads, boys and girls, uncles, aunts, grannies, let's make sure we're together as a family. And we're not going to make the same mistake that the church in Corinth made, which was to just look at this as natural. No, no. This is so much more than natural. This is supernatural. Because as we do this, what we do is we remember Jesus. We remember the cross. We remember the finished work. And if you're here today and you maybe have sickness, you can remember that his body was broken so that you can be whole. If you have lack of provision, you can remember that on the cross, Jesus was stripped naked. He lost everything that he had. He became poor on that cross so that we can become rich. When we look to the cross, we see there's provision for everything that faces us in the world today. And as we step into 2023, recognize that Jesus has already made provision for you. Recognize that as we come to this meal, that it's a reminder, it brings to remembrance all that Jesus has done for us. So let's not just look at the practical. Let's look at Jesus and see what he's done for us. If you don't have elements and you're watching us online, just press pause. Make sure you go and get a wafer and some juice and you'll be able to come back and participate with us in this moment. Peel back that first layer that gives you the wafer. The Bible says his body was broken so that we could be whole and well. That there's every provision. If you're lacking in some area of your life today, look to Jesus, look to the cross. If you're lacking emotionally, (laughs) he cries out on the cross, my God, my God, why am I forsaken? He was forsaken so that we are never forsaken. Even when you feel completely alone, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So whatever you need in this moment, just receive that from him. Holy Spirit, we pray that you'd come and you would minister that to our hearts. That we have every single thing that we need because of Jesus on the cross. And I pray that you would move on behalf of people. Move in our emotions. Move in the physical, in provision. Move in a place of healing. But Lord, I pray that you would confirm this word in people's hearts in this moment. We come to the blood that washes away all of our sin. It washes away. Though our sin was red like scarlet, we have been made as white as snow. And I want to encourage every single one of us. There is no sin that is greater than the blood of Jesus. The greatest temptation that we have in this moment is to think that Jesus paid for the sin of the world. But that one sin was too much for his blood. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Recognize that God has forgiven every single one of your sins. Even the sin that nobody else knows about Even the sin that you think is too big for his blood, it's not too big for his blood because his blood washes away every single sin. Step into 2023 with no guilt. Step into 2023 recognizing that you are forgiven. Everything. Everything. And if there's something that's been bothering you, if there's something that the devil is trying to hold over you, trying to lie to you that that everything else can be forgiven but not that sin, receive this morning, that's forgiven. 
The blood of Jesus has washed me clean. Receive it this morning. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you come into this room. You come into the places online and you minister. You minister the righteousness that we have in Jesus. The forgiveness that we have in Jesus. Come and remind us of the fact that we're completely forgiven. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much for watching today's word. I know you were blessed greatly and I wanna let you know if you want more resource like this, more sermons like this, they're all available for free on YouTube or on our Redemption Church app. So I wanna encourage you, if it blessed you, share this link with someone else and ensure that you get more of God's goodness and word in you. We are so excited that Redemption Church has been able to serve you with the good news of Jesus Christ today and look forward to seeing you return for more of God's goodness as we preach the word of Jesus. Be blessed.